Dubai is the top real estate on the planet. Mm. Jerusalem is going to be the capital of the earth. Mm. Right. So you have all these nations fighting for that. Yeah, they're fighting. They're fighting. Oh, yeah. Your land. Give me Isaiah 34 about the controversy. Isaiah 30. Get Isaiah 34 for me. Uh, I don't know what person is. Help me. Well, you finished, you got a question. 34, 7. Yeah. Right, 8. Isaiah 34, verse 8. Get that. Thank you, brothers. The book of Isaiah, chapter 34, verse 8. Listen good. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. The day of the Lord's vengeance is the coming World War III. Come on. And the year of recompense. The year of judgments. Come on. For the controversy of Zion. For the controversy of Zion. What is the controversy? Who does that land belong to? Right. Who is rightful heirs to the land of Jerusalem? That's the controversy. Who are the 12 tribes of Israel? That's the controversy. Right. Because nobody knows who the 12 tribes are. But we in the ghetto, we know. And there's a media black, I'm going to say it again. Right. There's a media blackout against the Israelites. Because they don't want this on the news. Every time when we get on the news, guess what they tell us? Don't read out the Bible. You can talk with your mouth, but don't use that book. Why? Because you'll, go, you'll be at home with the Bible and go, they're not lying, that's what it says. So if we go in there and just talk with our mouth, you go, ah, they're lying. That's just how they feel, what they think. Yes, young man, what's your question? Oh, um, what, made Jesus, what makes Jesus black? What makes like, Jesus why, black? Why, why, I mean, well, y'all say he's black, right? The Bible says it. Yeah. Revelation, let's get it. And I want you to have a Bible with you? Yeah, I'm, yes, I'm It's online. First, let's get Daniel. I like Daniel. Give me Daniel chapter 10, 5 and 6. Then we're going to get Revelation. So we're going to get an Old Testament scripture, then we're going to get a New Testament. Come on. The book of Daniel, chapter 10, verse 5. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, linen, go ahead. whose loins were girded with the fine gold of Euphaz. His loins is this area here. He had a fine gold of Euphaz which is a golden girl, go ahead. His body also was like the beryl. When you look up the word beryl, it means green. So his skin wasn't green. It's referring to the linen garment Christ had. It was the color of beryl, which means green, go ahead. And his face as the appearance of lightning. Now when Daniel looked at his face, he said, there's light all on his face, go ahead, like lightning. Come on. And his eyes as lamps of fire. Now when you read the prophecy, hold that, Hannah and I get her, Genesis 49 and 10. I want to read the prophecy about why the eyes are like lamps of fire. Because you might think he's like uh, Superman shooting X-ray heat vision out his eyes. But let's see why it says like fire, lamps of fire. Genesis 49, 12. And 12, thank you. Genesis chapter 49 and 12. Come on. His eyes shall be red with wine. Did you hear what it said, brother? What did it say? Okay, with wine. Because when you read Matthew 19, they call Christ a wine bibber. So Moses there is prophesying about the coming Messiah. One of the characteristics Moses says, his eyes will be red with wine and his teeth what? And his teeth white with milk. White with milk because he, those are the two things he drank a lot. Let's go back to Daniel now. Daniel 10. Start at 5 again. Daniel chapter 10 verse 5. Then I lifted up my eyes and looked. And behold, a certain man clothed in linen, in a linen garment, come up, whose loins were girded with the fine gold of Euphra. Christ had a golden girdle, come up. His body also was like the bell. The word bell means green. His garment was green. Read. And his face as the appearance of lightning, come up. And his eyes as lamps of fire. And his eyes of lamps of fire. Why, brother? And his arms. And his feet, and his arms, and his feet. Give me one with Christ. Do we got that one? We didn't bring it up? Read it again. And his arms, and his feet, like in color. So he looked at his arms, and his feet. Like I'm looking at her feet. I'm looking at her arms. Go ahead. Like in what? Like in color. Like in color. To polish brass. To polish brass means brass burned in a furnace. Meaning Christ is the same color as our feet dark skin. So now many people will say, what does it matter? You ever heard that say, you ever heard people say it doesn't matter? 
You're supposed to know the truth. Remember John 8, 32. Get it for him. John 8, 32. Listen, because many people are going to say to you, you might be faking it. It doesn't matter if he's black or white. Ebony and ivory. Oh, no, it's not that. I'm just saying, some people say that. Listen good, John 8, 32. John chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That's why the truth matters. The truth is what's going to make us free. We've been living our lives in lies for 400 years. Now in these last days, Christ says, I'm giving you the truth. And many people fight against it. The truth is what matters. The truth is what's going to set us free as a nation, as a people, as a race. But Daniel saw vision. Now when he came on earth, you read Revelation chapter 1. Okay, let's read that. Revelation no, I'm chapter 1. about while Christ was walking on the earth. Right, he saw a vision of him. No, not the vision. Okay, when they actually saw Jesus, because Jesus was a human. Revelation chapter 1. That's, that's Revelation. That's his coming. That's his second coming. Now, Revelation chapter 1 is when John saw him. That wasn't his second coming in Revelation. Let's read that. One and one didn't jump down to our level. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants. Now jump down to 10. Verse 10. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. The reason I wanted to go to 10, because many people say, maybe that's the spiritual world. But it said, read it again. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. The Lord's day is the Sabbath day, the seventh day. Come on. And heard behind me. Stop. And heard behind me a great voice. Go ahead. As of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega. So he heard behind him. So he was not asleep. John the Apostle was not asleep. But many people say, oh, that's spiritual. Maybe he was asleep. He said he looked, he heard behind him a voice. So he was not asleep. You understand? Verse 14. Verse 14. His head. Hold on, what you see right in the book, that part. That's the third verse. Yeah, okay, that's 11. First verse. 11. Go ahead. I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest. This is what I want you to understand. Read it again. What thou seest. What you see, John the Apostle. Write in a book. Write it in a book. Why is that important? Because in the last days, there's a lot of lies out here. Like this guy. This guy. Many of our mothers and fathers go to church never questioning this guy. This was a real man named Caesar Borges. There's books on it. These are the sketches by Leonardo da Vinci of him as the Renaissance Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You hear that? A lot of Puerto Ricans are under the same lying spell. Okay? These are the actual sketches. You can get this in a book. What's the name of that book? There's one called the Borges by Marion Johnson. By Marion Johnson. You can order it online. Borgias. The Borgias, Borgias by Marion Johnson. They show you the actual sketches that Leonardo da Vinci did of Caesar Borgia as the new Renaissance Jesus. That's how he became white. Many of you go to church tomorrow and bow and beat your kids to worship this garbage. This is the image of the beast Revelation talks about that the whole world would worship. Give me that. Give me that Revelation 13 and 7. There was more. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Get back. I'm sorry. I'm jumping the gun. Let's go back to Revelation 1, 11, 14, 14. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. And, and, and. Strike one. His hair is not woolly. Neither is it white. Go ahead. As white as snow. Okay. Let's strike for this image. Go ahead. And his eyes. I want you to look up here and look down. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Now we read earlier why his eyes were like a flame of fire because he drank wine in moderation. Right? Meaning the whites of his eyes. Come on. And his feet. Now I want you to see the black woman got angry. She mad. She means stomp her feet because the black man's image is an, a, an insult, a disgrace to many of our sisters. They despise that. Go ahead. And his feet. Like a divine bread. I want you to look at the sister's feet. Her feet is the same color as her face, right? Okay, go ahead. And his feet, like a divine bread. As if they burn in a furnace. As if they burn in a furnace. That's telling you that Jesus Christ, he was not even light-skinned. He said he looked like he was burned in a furnace. Growing up, I'm going to tell you some truth now. You know what they used to say about us dark-skinned brothers? 
Hey, you know, the joke was, you look like God left you in the oven too long. <laughs> but that's what the Bible says Christ looked like. And we despise that thing to this day. But it's the truth that's going to set us free. You understand that, sister? Brother, do you understand that? Okay, good, good, good. Now let's go. Revelation 13 and 7. Bear with me a second. Get Revelation 13 and 7. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 7. Come on. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. So now, this is a parable. I'm going to break it down for you. Read it again. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Who are the saints? Uh, here's a question now. Who are the saints? The saints of God. Who are the saints? The Israelites. Are you guessing or you know that for sure? Israelites. Okay. Here's a precept to help you understand saints. Psalms chapter 148 and verse 14. This is going to prove who the saints are because in Christianity they say anybody that believes in Jesus is a saint. Huh? I'm going, we're going to read it for you right here. Psalms chapter 148 verse 14. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel. The only saints are the children of Israel. Now, in the news, sister, y'all might be, y'all watch the news about the Pope. And they say, oh, we're going to make him a saint. You cannot make somebody an Israelite. You're either born an Israelite or you're not. They're arguing in the Vatican, that house of whoredom, house of homosexuality, house of idolatry, pedophiles. Oh, we're going to make John Paul a saint. You can't make, but since nobody knows the Bible, nobody's there to stand up in truth. You understand that, brother? So now, why'd I go there? Oh, Revelation, Revelation 13 and 7. Revelation chapter 13, verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Who's the he that made war against us? Who made war against our people? Who made war against our people and made us slaves? Who? You don't know history? 1600, 1690, just think. Huh? I can't hear you. Whisper. Huh? The whites, you're not sure about that? How old are you? You're 18. I, I need you young men to come up in your... No, but it's okay. We're here to help you. Read it again. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. So the white man made war against us. Go ahead. <clears throat> and to overcome them. They overcame us. Go ahead. And power. And was, power was given. Was given him over all kindreds. So the white man had power over all kindreds. Not just us, but over everybody. Read. And tongues. Come on, man. And nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Wait, wait, read that part again. And all that dwell upon earth shall worship him. And all that dwell upon earth shall worship him. And all that dwell, because this, Christianity is the world's what? Largest religion. You got Christians in Africa, Christians in Asia, Christians in China. You got Christians in Arabia, Arabia all over. All, all, every that bottom precept again. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Do you hear what the Bible is saying? Now that's hip, that's a parable. But we know what it's talking about. Because right. you're going to examine who is everybody worshiping? Who is our mothers and our fathers worshiping? This guy right here. That's yeah. who everybody's worshiping. That's the kids who that is. Right. You go home and ask, who's that? Jesus. And you ask a minister, who Jesus looked like that in the Bible? They could never do it. But our people never challenge things. But they challenge us. Who we'll bring out a scripture like, ah! I don't know how many times you've seen Israelites, but I'm sure, have you seen Israelites before? People want to fight against the truth we bring out. But we're bringing out what the Bible says. And they're fighting us because of the brainwashing. The indoctrination since, when did you start watching TV? Give me an age. Okay, from the age of five to 18, you have had, how many years is that? No, give me a number, I'm bad. 13 years? 13 years of complete brainwashing. Now when you hear the truth, it's like, what? That's odd. Because television, 24 hours a day. Brainwashing, brainwashing, brainwashing. Now we're trying to unplug you. You gotta come out of this demonic system. It's of Babylon. Because in the Bible, America is called Babylon. Next question, you gotta ask some more questions. We love questions. We're here to help set you free. Come on, sister, I know you got a wealth of questions. Black women always got questions. Ask, brother, what's your question? Hold on, the reason why I asked why Jesus, what made Jesus black was because 
when he was on the earth, uh -huh. he stated that he came in the likeness of man. Mm -hmm. Meaning, when he came from heaven, whatever he looked like on earth was not him in the heavenly realm. Okay, that's not true. That's why I read Daniel 10, because that was the heavenly realm on him. About his arms and his feet like in color to polish breast. Now you know, I'm gonna tell you why people say that. Get me the scripture about the rainbow over the head. Where's that scripture where it says he sat on the throne? Revelation 4. Revelation, Revelation chapter 4, verse 3. This is it. Here it goes. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne. So now John's seeing a vision in the heavens. It says what was around the throne? And there was a rainbow round about the throne. You know why I want that? Because many blacks have been deceived into thinking that there's no color in heaven. They say, oh, Christ might have looked black when he walked to earth, but in the heavenly realm, he don't look like that. Why? You know why that be said by a lot of brothers and sisters? Because they really, that goes back to that self-hate. We can't imagine that we look, I'm gonna show you God. You wanna read about God in the heavens? Daniel 7 and 9. Let's read about God the Father. Not God the Son, God the Father. Listen good. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. What does that mean? I beheld till the thrones were cast down. Cast down means what? Here's cast down. Ah! What does that mean? Huh? Okay, thrones means what? Thrones means kingdoms. Read it again. And I, be, and I beheld till the thrones were cast down. So Daniel beheld in a vision and saw all the kingdoms on earth thrown down. And the Ancient of Days did sit. And the Ancient of Days did sit. Ancient of Days, he's called, because he has no beginning of days nor end of days. He's older than days. Read it again, and the Ancient. And the Ancient of Days did sit. If he sat, he had to have what? In order to have sit down, you gotta have what? Huh? You gotta have something else, a body. Because most people say, God don't got no body. He just a puff of smoke and floats around. Read it again. And the ancient of days did sit. Come on. Whose garment was what? Whose garment? He had a garment on. In order to have a garment, he has to have a what? A body. A body. Go ahead. Whose garment was white as snow. And in the spirit he saw his garment was white like snow. Gorgeous, emerald looking garment. Just jazzed up. Go ahead. And the hair of his head. Now he's getting to the hair of his head. Like the pure wool. Like the pure wool. Like the pure wool. So what is God? A black man. That's right. And many of our people despise that thing. You see the our sisters with all these perms, it's gonna come a day that's gonna come to an end. Why do our sisters like perms? Why do brothers like perms? Come on, bro. Come on, man. What do you say? We wanna look white. We wanna look white. Y'all saw the movie Malcolm X, you saw Malcolm X? Remember he got the chair, he said, it looks white, right? It looks white, white though. That's why our people do that, because we want to look white. We wanna be favorable to them. Next question, give me some more questions, come on. Um, okay, so you said that you saw God. Yes, the Father, Ancient of Days. Um, That's the vision. Then why does John 4, 24 says, God is a spirit, and they that worship it must worship in the spirit and truth. Okay, let's also get Also, it does proclaim that um, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. I believe there was nobody that actually saw the Lord and lived. But he turned his back, and he turned his back. I'm going to explain all that. I'm going to explain who it was that saw the back. Moses, Moses, Moses. Now, when Daniel, Daniel 7, listen, sister. If God turned his back to him, then he had a body. Yes, very good. You see, that's what I'm saying. I don't deny that he had a body, but I just think it's a So, what did Daniel see? Daniel saw what he vision. He didn't stand in his presence and see the actual him. He yeah. saw the vision of what he looked like. You understand? There's a difference between what you're asking and what we read. But that doesn't take away from the fact that God is still the spirit. He is the spirit. Get John 4, 24. Let's get it. Let's get it. The book of John, chapter 4, verse 24. God is a spirit. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean God has no color in heaven? No. Does that mean that he does not have a body? Of course not. Right, because we read he has a body. 
we read his hair is like the pure wool. Regardless of him being a spirit, there's a spiritual aspect to you. If we, if your flesh was taken away in the spirit world, we saw you, we'd be similar. Very similar. So what we saw about God was the same thing. People try to use John 24 to eradicate Daniel 7 and 9. It doesn't take away from it. But at it the same time, they give you this. Right. But they'll, right, they'll give you this. Give but you this. question. Wait, hey, but I, hear this I mean, like I've that. always questioned that. And I never really took it into heart that, oh my gosh, that's Jesus. I, so I, now, John 4, 24. Let's read it again. John chapter 4, verse 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. What does that mean? Okay, let's deal with the word truth. What does it mean? Truth. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. What does truth mean? I mean, I can't read it. I'm going to give you a scripture. I want you to read along. Psalms 119. 142. Verse 142. Let's wait till they get it. Because many people say, oh, we got the truth. Every lying church says they got the truth. But let's examine it with the scripture now. Psalms chapter 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. What's the truth? What's the truth? What's the truth? The law. The law. The law. Go back to John 4, 24. John chapter 4, verse 24. <coughs> God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit. In spirit? And in truth, meaning according to the law. We gotta worship him according to what the law says. So, many people have not been called. When we this, this is the book of the law. When we read what Christ looked like, our children are worshiping this. And it has kept us in bondage for 400 years. Now it's time to be set free. Now it's time to be set free. Now, you quoted another scripture about holiness, something you said. Um. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Holiness without works. What is holiness? Wait, no man shall see the Lord. What is holiness? Holiness is being pure, being righteous before God. Holiness is pure, being righteous before God. Give me Revelation 7 and either verse 7 or verse 12 about holy. Wherefore, where it starts with wherefore? Romans. Romans. What did I say? Good. Yeah, 7 and 12. Sorry. I want you to get it so you understand. That way you can never say the Israelites misled me, they deceived me, everything we get, we want you to read with us. Revelation what? Romans 7 and 12. 12. Oh, I'm sorry. I keep saying Revelation, sorry. Romans 7, what verse? 12. 12. Romans 7 verse 12. Wherefore, the law is holy. The law is what? The law is holy. The law is what? The law is holy. Go ahead. And the commandment holy. And just and good. So back to what your statement was about we must worship without holiness and works can no man see good. Something like that. Without holiness, no man see The holiness the Bible's talking about is according to the commandments. Do you keep the commandments? Well, I try. I try. You try. I try. Let's, let's talk about some easy commandments. Okay? Easy, easy commandments, right? Leviticus 21 and 5. I'm going to ask him. I know he's young, but I'm going to ask. He's going to give us either an honest answer or he's going to lie. Okay, good. Listen good to this. Leviticus chapter 21, verse 5. They shall not make boldness upon their heads. The Israelites shall not make boldness on their heads. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. Now, that's why when you look at all the brothers, even the young men here, we have a beard on. It's because it's according to the law. And like you said, without holiness and works, can no man come from God. So that's one least law. How many times we can see the Lord? We can come before without God, holiness. But we can't see the Lord. So now, the holiness is what again? The law. The law. One law, the least law, is the man going. Can you go a bit? Okay. Okay. Man, I know you're young. That's why I'm not hoping on you. You're young. Uh, we got the young man here. I know he can go a bit. You got many ministers like him himself. Who? Oh, young man here too. Read it again for everyone. Leviticus chapter 21, verse 5. They shall not make boldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. So now when you read that from the verse 1, he's addressing it to the Levites. So somebody, you might go home and go, hey, they tricked me. That's only for the Levites. 
But when you read chapter 19, he says the same thing for all the Israelites. Get that, 1927. Mm -hmm. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 27. Ye shall not run the corners of your head. Meaning shave your head bald like the basketball stars. Neither shall thou more, meaning shave off, the corners of thy beard. So that was a little commandment. And if our people cannot keep the little commandment, do you think they're going to keep the bigger ones? Of course not. I'm glad you said that. Uh, I mean, you mean what? What do you mean? Because the smaller commandments, you see people who tend to take the smaller commandments as, okay, it's just a small sin. You're mad it, it, it doesn't really matter. Okay, I'm glad that's not that. my That's not my way of thinking, but okay. that's other people's way of thinking. Now, I'm going to help you. I'm gonna see what, let's see what Jesus said about that. Right. What Christ said. Matthew 5, 17. Are you reading along with us, brother? No, I, I, I know I know most of this stuff. Okay. Oh, you know most of this stuff? Yeah. It's going to be test time in a few minutes. Come on. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. What does that mean, he came to fulfill? What does that mean? Anybody, anybody, what does it mean? What does it mean? Fulfill what? Fulfill what, sister? Are you going to answer? Fulfill what? Like to teach people what they didn't know. To teach people what they didn't know. What are you saying? The promises. The promises. Okay. Make it, things whole. To make things whole. I'm going to give you the precept to understand that. Acts 3, 18. This is what Jesus Christ fulfilled. This is what Jesus Christ fulfilled. Acts 3, 18. The book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 18. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he had so fulfilled. That Christ should suffer, he had so fulfilled. What did he fulfill? His suffering. What was his suffering? Him dying on the cross for the nation of Israel. Read it again. Acts chapter 3, verse 18. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he had so fulfilled. That Christ should suffer, he had so fulfilled. Back to Matthew 5 now. Not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. So Christ said, I don't want you to think that he came to destroy the law or the prophets. Go ahead. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. What did he fulfill? Huh? No? You hear you, you know what he said? He said Christ fulfilled the law. That's not what the Bible said. You were, you were talking, right? You were not listening. Back to Acts 3.18. Get Acts 3.18 on your phone. Acts chapter 3 verse 18. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, that Christ should suffer, he had so fulfilled. He had so fulfilled. Let me look at it. He had so fulfilled. You see that? Yeah. So what did he fulfill? Him suffering, dying on the cross. You got that? Yeah. Back to Matthew 5, 17. I'm going to ask you again. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. What did he fulfill? His death. Him dying on the cross. Right? Read on. Verse 18, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one titter shall in no wise pass from the law. Meaning nothing in the law shall pass until heaven and earth pass away. Are we still on the earth? Do I, am I looking up at the heavens? So has the law passed away? Has the law, the answer is no. Read on. Verse 18, for verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. Fill till all be fulfilled. Come on, come on. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. Now this goes back to you. Because you said some people feel like the law of the beard or the head is the least commandment, right? Read it again. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. Like the beard, the hair. And shall teach men so. He shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. He shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. That don't mean you're going to make it. Telling lies, it means you're going to be put to death. You're going to be a thought. Right. And the next verse is going to explain that. Okay? 
But who's but whosoever shall do and teach them the but same. Whosoever shall do and teach what? Whosoever shall do and teach what? The law. Go ahead. The same shall be called great. The same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. In the kingdom of heaven, and heaven will be established on the earth. We're gonna get that in a few minutes. Go ahead. For I say unto you, listen good, that except your righteousness shall shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. The scribes and Pharisees, their righteousness was hypocrisy. They would tell you things, but they would not do it. Go ahead. Ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's the proof that you won't enter. So when he said the verse above it, you're going to be called the least. It means you won't enter the kingdom. If you go around telling people they can break the least laws, and you do, and you tell people that two ways. What are the two ways people can teach? Through mouth and what else? Actions. Your actions, your example. By me watching you, as a child, I look at you, I can say, Daddy don't grow his beard, he always shaves. So although you never tell me that as a child, I will follow your example and break the commandments because I see what my father does. So those are the two ways we got to be mindful. Our words and the way we live our lives. That's how we let our light shine. Right. That's how we let our light shine before men. By them seeing your good works. Yes. Next question. Action. Um, okay, so if you look at the church today, the way they worship and the way they praise and the way they have service, let's take the typical Pentecostal church. Okay. Do you think there's anything wrong with that? Of course. There's a devil, the Bible speaks. Right. Every church on the earth, for example, you said let's take the Pentecostal church. You got a Bible on your phone, right? Yes. Show me Pentecostal church in the Bible. It doesn't, it, okay, um, Pentecostals, it's not in the Bible, oh, but oh. they take after Pentecost. Oh, what is, is Pentecost? Bible. Pentecost is when they was in the upper room. They who? The board. Uh -oh. the, the Israelites. The Israelites. Why no, were they? Why were they there? The not the Israelites? Not the Israelites. Oh, okay, go ahead. I'm because actually the Israelites were the ones that heard them in the upper room and thought they were drunk. So the oh. Now, concerned. I want you to see what church has done to our young couple. But that's okay because I was in a worse condition than you. Let's get there. Go to Acts chapter 2 and 1. Let's start there. The book of Acts chapter 2 verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, does anybody know what the days of Pentecost is? Is it a church movement? What is it? It was, um, I think I told you. I'm sorry, it's in the corner of my head. Back. Okay, do you know what Pentecost is? Not quite sure. Okay, Pentecost, young lady, do you know what Pentecost is? No. Pentecost is a Greek word which means 50th day. There was a holiday the Israelites had which celebrated the 50th day when you read Leviticus 23. Can we get that real quick? Yeah. Leviticus 23, get to the point. Oh, 15, thank you. 15. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow, after the Sabbath, from the day that ye, that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete. So right. seven Sabbaths shall be complete. That was 49 days plus one, when you read on, was the 50th day. It was a holiday only the Israelites celebrated. Now let's go to Acts chapter 2. Because Pentecost is the Greek word for the Feast of First Fruits. Let's read it from verse 1. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, and they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Right? And they appeared unto them uh, cloven tongues, like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. Come on. And they, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost, come on. And began to speak with other tongues. Okay, we're going to talk about tongues in a few minutes. Because I know in your mind you're thinking, ha, ba, 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 ba. I know you're thinking that stuff, right? All right, come on. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Come on. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem. Devout, they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews. What? Jews. What? Jews. Right? Devout men out of every nation under heaven. Keep reading. Now, when this... So now, the Jews was all there in Jerusalem, right? Read on. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. So they spoke earthly languages. Go ahead. 
And they, and they were all amazed and marveled, Come on. saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Are not all these which speak Galileans? Who were the Galileans? Israelites. Galilee was one of the lands given to the tribe of Gad and Reuben. That's why you've got to know history. So the statement you made that the Jews was there but the people speaking were other nations is wrong. The churches have messed you up. That's why I said y'all have to come out of the church system right, right. and learn your history. Oh no, the church didn't tell me that. Oh, you learned that on your own? No, I didn't learn that on my own. Where'd you learn that? They actually told me. I was just getting confirmation. Oh, you're getting confirmation, but you have the truth now. Okay, y'all, your duty, young man, come out of all the foolishness that you're in, repent of your sins as an Israelite, and come learn. You too. All of you. What's your question, young man? Can you um? I want to know about marriage and divorce. You want to know about marriage and divorce? I'm going to take a guess. I'm going to take a guess. You're divorced? When well, you're thinking about it, you don't want to say I something. I just want to know. Matthew 19. Give me Matthew 19. It's a good, it's a good question. Whoa. The book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 5. And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and, and shall cleave to his wife. The first thing you need, because you're a young man, you got a girl, so-called girlfriend? Nigeria. Yes? What's her name? Nigeria. What is it? Nigeria. Nigeria. Don't be lying out here, brother. <laughs> yeah, I got a girl. You ain't got a girlfriend. But <laughs> well, anyway, in the Bible, in the Bible, there's no such thing as boyfriends and girlfriends. No such thing. Boyfriends and girlfriends is another term for adultery or fornication. Right. Illicit sexual communion. Because we all, when we was, before we learned this, we all had girlfriends. And you all know what we did with those girlfriends. Right. There are more Povich right now talking about this is baby. Ah, and when they go, no, it's not his. Because that's what girlfriends and boyfriends do. Now we got to come out of that. Read it again. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 19, verse 5. And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. Cleave to his wife. So when you leave your mother and father, you cleave to your wife. In order to do that, brother, you must have what? In order to get a wife, you must have what? You need a means to take care of her, right? Young lady, right? Sister in the back with the shades, right? If I make you my wife, I gotta be able to take care of you, right? I can't have no job talking about, that's my, that's my wife. Then she's going to be known as what, a baby mama. Because I can't marry her, right? So I need you to understand that. Come on. And they twain shall be one flesh. Meaning one mind. Come on. Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. Come on. What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. What does Christ talk about? Divorce. There is to be no divorce. Come on. They say unto him, watch this. Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorce? They said, the Pharisees said, wait a minute, Christ. Moses taught us it's okay to divorce. Go ahead. And to put her away. He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, but from the beginning, what does the word Genesis mean? Beginning. But from the book of Genesis, but from the beginning, it was not so. From Genesis, there was no such thing as divorce. Go ahead. Mm. And I say unto you, listen good, whosoever shall put away his wife, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, except it be for fornication. What is fornication? Sex outside of marriage. Sex outside of marriage, very good. That could be, uh, give me incest, if your spouse, has sex, you come home, she having sex with your nephew, she's having sex with another woman, all this fornication. Any kind of illicit sexual union is fornication. You understand that? You understand that? You can, the proof is Leviticus 18 gives you a breakdown on all forms of fornication. Read on. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, Committed adultery. She committed adultery. So now, you may ask, I'm going to see, I'm trying to get an understanding with you, sister. A lot of women like yourself, they get into bad relationships, bad marriages. When a man is doing things, 
contrary to God's word. Give me 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I'm going to show you a secret, sister and brothers. None of you as yet have repented of your sins as Israelites. I'm going to say it again, and I want you to understand what I'm saying. None of you have repented of your sins as Israelites. You, have, you might have been baptized in water. You might have claimed to have repented, but it's been according to this. You've repented according to this, and it's wrong. It's wrong. What I mean is what? Under this religious system, they taught you, come as you are. They even teach it's okay to be homosexual. Come as you are. And it's wrong according to the Bible. They teach women, they say women can dress like men. You can wear pants. Come as you are. That's not biblical. So many of our people grow up and they say, I repented. Then when you examine them, no, they have not repented. They're in the clubs Friday night, church Sunday morning. They have not, like BET. You know BET? Black Evil Television? That is a system set up by the white men to put blacks into the gutter. Everything they put out is garbage. Something evil in it. And I'm talking about Bobby Jones and the church system too. Mary Mary, Trinity 357, all them. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. Now, where she go? She wanted to answer the phone. I was going to get some more on that. Next question. I mean, I don't really have a question. I'm just thinking about what you said. Because, I don't know, I don't know. Okay, okay, just get your thoughts together. Hold on a second. Now, I want you to listen to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Come on. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He is a new creature. Go ahead. All things are passed away. Now, don't read that in church, but guess what Christ they're talking about? This criminal right here. So our people have never been in the true Christ. We've been in this, the image of the beast. Now we're trying to shake ourselves out of this evil lies. You understand that? Read it again. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Uh -huh. Old things are passed away. Meaning old sins are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So now when you, re when you truly repent of your sins as Israelites, because Christ only came for the Israelites. I'm going to say it again. Christ only came for the Israelites. I'm going to say it one more again. Christ only came for the Israelites. Right. That's right. When you repent as an Israelite, it says all things, no matter what you've done in your past, it's forgiven. You understand that? I want all you to understand that thing. It says all things are passed away. Behold, all things are now become new. You're a new creature once you are born again. In the true Christ, what this Bible says. So now, your husband, I'm getting back to you. First Corinthians 7. You and your husband may have been, you might have had a good union together, but something went wrong in the marriage, right? Something went wrong. Maybe you don't want to speak on it, it's okay. Uh, it might be a, 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 another woman. He might have been a whoremonger. All that. I'm not looking at it, you know what I want about reconciling. First Corinthians 7. Come on. Verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 11. Now, what I need all you to understand about 1 Corinthians 7 and 11, right. Paul, didn't touch it. Didn't touch it. Stay Satan don't like this sure. truth. He's trying Come to get on. one of us. Um, Paul is addressing marriages in Christ, meaning you and your spouse have married and you're both following the scriptures. You understand, sister? I want you to understand the difference between what I'm going over. Go ahead. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 11. But, and if she depart, if a woman depart from her husband, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. So if there's a problem in your marriage, sister, you can separate, but the stipulation is to remain unmarried or be reconciled to your husband. Meaning some people divorce because of drugs. He might be abusive. Give me some other things. Help me out. What other things men do? It might be money. It might be, he might be a whoremonger sleeping around. But the Bible says, let him get himself together. Let him get himself together. You understand that? Do you understand that? Yeah. Now you might not like that because I'm looking at you. Oh, I like that. You like that thing. So we need to get forward. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 11. But and if she depart, let her remain unmarried. 
or be reconciled to her husband. Now, let's say that. Let's say this. You come in this truth as an Israelite, and your husband says, to hell with that Israelite. I believe in white man Jesus. I'm going to give my life to that. Jump down to what? About the unbeliever. Jump to what verse is it? 15. Verse 15. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. So now there's another stipulation. If you come in the truth and your husband rejects it and he leaves you, the Bible says you're not under the bondage of marriage. You understand that? That means you don't have to wait for him because he turned out to be what? The devil, the Bible speaks of. But that's providing you come to this truth as is. You understand that, sis? Jump down to about if she married. The last verse. Somewhere in there. About only in the Lord, that one. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 39. Uh -huh. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband lives. So you and your husband, if you're the two of you are in God's truth, keeping the commandments. We're not discussing Baptist, Pentecost, all that garbage. That ain't what Paul's talking about. He's talking about the nation of Israel. Read. But if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to, to, to be married to whom she will, only in the Lord. So you can remarry again in the nation of Israel, only in the Lord if your husband dies. Read you understand again. that? Read it again. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. But if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will. Only in the Lord. You understand that? So here's my next question. I got a question, I got a question. According to the Bible, who or what is the church? In the Bible, what or who is the church? You know what I want? Any answer? Huh? Okay, because there's a confusion out here. People say the Baptist church is the church, Pentecostal, like when you just said Pentecostal church. Many people allude that that's the church, and that's why I ask. Show us Pentecostal church in the Bible. You can't do it. Baptist church, you can't do it. Jehovah Witness church, you can't do it. It's not in there. It's man-made tradition. Now, here's the church in the Bible. Acts 7, what verse? 38. Verse 38. Acts chapter 7, verse 38. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. Who was the church in the wilderness? With the angel, which spake to him in the Mount Sinai. So who was the church in the wilderness? Was it a group called Baptists? Or Pentecostals? Or Jehovah Witness? Read it again. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai. So who was the church in the wilderness? The nation of Israel. The nation of Israel. If you teach or say anything else, guess what you are? A liar. Oh, give me that in Proverbs 30 and 6. Hold on. This is what the church is. Like I said, y'all need to come out of the churches. I'm not saying it because it's a, a hate campaign because we grew up Baptist, Pentecostals. That was our life. But there came a day when the Spirit of God came upon us and opened our spiritual eyes. Now, you got it? Proverbs 30 and 6. The book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verse 6. Here it goes. And add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and be found a liar. Read it again correctly. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. See that? Don't add to his word. Let God reprove you, and you'll be found a liar. Many people, when they come before us, and they want to fight us about the white image of Jesus, and we say one thing to them, prove it. They can't prove it. So guess what? Read it again. Add Proverbs chapter 30, verse 6. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. We ask people, prove to us Pentecostal church is the church of God. Prove it. They can't do it. Baptists, prove it. They can't. Jehovah's Witness, they can't do it. Read it again. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Here's the next thing. Christmas. Many of our people love Christmas. And many sisters say, I do it for the children. Can anybody prove me Christmas in the Bible? Ain't no Christians out here today? I know the one over there hiding behind the government. Ain't no Christians out here today. 
Should we celebrate Christmas? Yeah, you man. You say no. Why do you say no? What do you base that on? Because we have a twist where we say, oh, that's the day that Jesus was born. Uh -huh. I don't believe that. You I don't, don't think believe that's the day Jesus was born. And then furthermore, we, a lot of um, holidays that we give our children gifts and candy to literally cover the fact why we celebrate this day anyway. Like, um, okay. for example, Easter is a pagan word. Very good. Resurrection okay. Sunday. So now, when you and your girlfriend decide to get serious and you decide to marry her, you're going to have children like the young man right there. There will come a day when the young man or young daughter, whichever, says, why do we celebrate Christmas? That might go, it's going to come a day. Now you will have to prove to him your answer. Get Jeremiah 10. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 10. Jeremiah. So all of us thought that a white, but many of us grew up in the projects, and we didn't have no chimney, but we thought a white man would appear out of nowhere and give us gifts. And the day I found out that was a lie, oh, I was upset. I saw my mama under that damn tree. I said, what you doing? <laughs> I thought Sammy Claus was coming. He lied to us. <laughs> Jeremiah 10. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Oh, house of who? O house of Israel. Oh, the house of Israel, you blacks and Latinos. Come on. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Learn not the ways of the heathen. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Signs of heaven, shooting stars, comets, go ahead. For the heat are dismayed at them. Come on. For the customs of the people are vain. For the customs of the people are vain. The word vain means lies. Read. For one cut of the tree out of the forest. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. So now, Jeremiah, God is telling Jeremiah about a famous custom in ancient Babylon. One cuts a tree down out of the forest, read. They deck it with silver and with gold. They decorate the tree with silver and with gold. What holiday is this? Christmas, read. Verse three, for the customs of the people of A, for one cut the tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the ax. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it moves not. They decorate it with silver and gold and they put it with hammers and nails that it moves not. What is this talking about? Christmas. Verse 1 again. Verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Listen. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Learn not the ways of the heathen. What heathen race today taught us to celebrate Christmas and when? You got the answer? I see you smiling. Who taught us to celebrate Christmas and when? Um, I'm gonna say white man. The white man. The white man taught us that in slavery. In slavery, they taught all of us to celebrate Christmas. They taught us to decorate it with silver and gold. So this is, many people hear us teaching things. Oh, you got a hate campaign. This is not about hatred, it's about truth. If the truth makes you mad, then put the Bible down. You understand? When, yes. The 25th of December was who's, who's, um, Nimrod. Nimrod. Nimrod, the Babylonian king. And that's in history books you can read about that. It was never Jesus Christ. Get Luke 2. Luke 2 42 tells you when Christ was his birthday. The book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 42. Not at 40. Verse 40. Or is it 38? Yeah, 40. 40. 40. Okay. Verse 40. And the child grew and wax strong in spirit. The child is making reference to Jesus Christ, come up. Filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old. Wait, when was he 12 years old? Read it again. And when he was 12 years old, Go ahead. they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. So the feast was Passover. It said in on Passover when he was 12, it's telling you when his birthday is. You understand that? So he was never born in the dead of winter, December 25th. And you can ask any Christian, prove it in the Bible. People know, but they gobble. Anything the white men say, our people follow without question. We don't question nothing. So now, what is 
your race according to the Bible? What is your race according to the Bible? What is your race, your race, your race according to the Bible? Y'all looking over here. But if I ask you to prove that you're Israelites, what chapter and verse would you go to to prove it? Deuteronomy. Write that down. Deuteronomy. You got flies? How come this young man don't got to fly? Come on, yo. Well, I want you to have it. You take it for me. Can you please take it? That's right. Give him the fly. I mean, Tobias, I'm sorry. Get y'all mixed up. Thanks. Take the fly. Because what we're going over, you're going to get on that train and have a conversation and go. The brothers were showing me something I don't remember, but it's Deuteronomy 20. Verse. Deuteronomy verse. Uh, wait. Deuteronomy. Let's establish this. Who is Moses speaking to in the book of Deuteronomy? The Israelites. Do you agree with that? Young lady, you agree with that? You agree with that? You agree with that? Okay. He's talking to the Israelites. Verse 32. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Verse 32. It's not a 15. You were correct. 15. I like it. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments. So if you will not keep God's commandments, Moses said to our people, and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So let's, just, let's pause there. Moses said to the Israelites, if you break God's commandments, all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Let's read some of the curses. Verse 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fill with longing for them all the day long. Read it again. Thy sons and thy daughters, thine eyes shall look and fill with longing for them all the day long. Did that happen to us? Were our sons and daughters given to another people? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Our sons and our daughters were given to another people. Go ahead. And there shall be no might in thine hand. As a people, do we have the might, economic or military or financial, to come back as a nation of people? To reunite as the 12 tribes? Do we got that power today? Yes. We do? You can take down the white man's army? He will not let us go. He will not tell you your true race. So do we have power to overcome him? What is it? What power you got? Remember they got satellites too. What, what you got? I have the power of God. Which, really? Yeah. I know you're 18, so I'm going to help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. I'm going to help you. Read verse 48 again. Read 48. We're jumping down. 48. 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Read that bottom precept again. Until. No, yoke. And, yoke. and he, come on. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. What are we reading? Bible prophecy. Did that happen to our people? Yes or no? Did that happen to us? So what are we reading? What are we proving this day? That we are the Israelites. We're not making this stuff up. It's in the Bible. Now, verse 68, I got a question. Verse ah, wait. Stay with me. How did blacks get to the shores of America? With ships. Verse 68. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. And the Lord <laughs> shall bring you into Egypt again. The word Egypt. That might sound confusing. The word Egypt means bondage. I'm going to prove it. Exodus 20 and 2 tells you what Egypt means. It's a Greek word. Get that? Exodus, Exodus 20, verse 2. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So Egypt means the house of bondage. Back to verse 68 in Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt, Again, we and the Lord shall bring you into the house of bondage. A Again. Time. A second time with what? With ships. With what? With ships. With what? With ships. We're not making nothing up. You could think this is a hate campaign all you want, but this is a truth campaign. You understand that, brother? Read verse 68 again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Because we went into slavery on ships. We're the only race that that happened to. 
Go ahead. By the way, where if I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Come on. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. What's that word that keeps being used? Read that again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Now, God is saying something in that verse that the churches are scared to say. Mm -hmm. It said we would be sold unto who? Unto you. Unto who? Did it say friends? Because you know what? We love us some good white. We love, what's that cook that call us nigga? What's her name? The oh, cook. Man, no, 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 Paula Dean. Oh, oh, oh. We love Miss Paula Dean. I heard about the Bible it. says we would be sold unto our enemies. Now you can either join with what God says or you can fight against you. But I think our arms are too short to fight with him. He knows what he created. He said, I'm calling them the enemies. Read again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Come on. By the way, where if I speak unto thee? Thou shalt see no more again. You will not see your true homeland no more again. Cut. And there, and there, once you got off the slave ships, ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men, bond men meaning slave men, and bond women, bond men and slave women. So we're not making nothing up. We're not making anything up. We're giving you Bible facts, Bible prophecy. Come on. And no man shall buy you. What does that part mean, brother? And no man shall buy you. It's a, the word buy is an old word. It means save. No man shall save. For example, we had many great black leaders that tried to raise up and deliver the black race, correct? You had Marcus Garvey. You had Martin Luther King, Malcolm X. Uh, give me some more. Nat Turner. Negro Prosser. Then Mark Vesey. It says no man could do it. You understand it? No man could save us from this condition. That's why I said to you, do we have the power to deliver ourselves? The answer is no. You had great black leaders rise up with millions, and they all would assassinate. Who's the savior? Right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Who is the savior? Who is the savior? Who is the savior? What is his job? Luke 1. Luke 1 and 69. Luke 1 verse 68. I want you to read this one, because once we read this, you ain't going to believe this is in the Bible. We're talking about the mission of Jesus Christ. It's going to shock the Christian today. Come on. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Because Christ came out of the house of David. Come on. As he speaks by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Come on. That we should be saved from our enemies. Wait, read that again. The what? That we should be saved from our enemies. You hear many churches say, oh, I'm saved. Sisters and brothers, none of us are saved yet. Not near one of us. The proof is, read it again, that we, that we should be saved from our enemies. We have not been saved from our enemies yet. We're still here in America, in bondage. We don't make no laws here. We don't pass no rules. We're in bondage. We still pay taxes. We're in bondage. Go ahead. And from the hand of all that hate us. That's the mission of Jesus Christ. To save you from your enemies and from the hand of everyone that hates you. And you get a lot of enemies. That's right. You might not believe it. You might think white people love you. If you could dance, you can sing, you're their friend. But let that voice go. Stop being able to play, a, pay, pay, play basketball. Watch them give you Daz's boot. You out. Like it says in Psalms 137, get me that. Give me that. I got to show you that. This is when white people like us. Psalms 137. Uh -huh. They that wasted us. What verse is it? Seven. No. Hold on and read it. Psalms no, one to thirty-seven, verse three. Come on. That's For they are they that carried us away captive. For they, they that carried us away captive. Who carried us away captive? The white man. Who carried us away captive? Young lady. Who? The white man. Come on. Required of us a song. Required of us a song. Sing for us. Come on. And they that wasted us. They that wasted us. The word wasted means destroy us. Right? Required of us mirth. Required, required of us mirth. Mirth means what? Right. Laughter. Comedy. Entertain us. Comedy. Comedian. Entertain us. Go ahead. Sing. Sing. Us one of those songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? That's the answer. So, they that carried us away captive, those that wasted us required of us mirth. That's the entertainment business. 
That's why if you're a ball player, you're good in this the system. If you can sing and dance, shuck and jive, you're good. But if you can't do those things, you're in the good, you're in the hood, you're in the ghetto. You understand? This is what we're reading is all Bible prophecy. It's meant for your uplifting, meant for your mental and spiritual development. Without this book, you're gonna be lost. Every last one of us. Any other questions? Yes. It's okay, brother. What's your name? Brian. Brian, it's okay. I actually have to go after this one. Okay. Um, okay, I'm a dance minister at church. You are a dance minister at church. Okay. That means I dance, um, and I also do church dance. Now, the way I worship, the way I, well, I don't really call it worship, because this is my form, for which I call up to God. Or the way I may worship in church, um, Yes, I do speak in what is known to be tongues. Uh, I knew it! I knew it! That's why I said that thing to you. Okay, go ahead, Brian. Come on. Um, yes, I do prophesy. And, yes, I have been filled with the Holy Spirit, as most people say. Yes, but, um, one thing I don't do is I don't follow the religion of the church, pretty much. I don't follow doctrine. I don't follow, um, actually I do practice the Jewish roots. I do go back to my Jewish roots. So I do like stuff like train with the Taliban. I do sound the shofar. I do like a lot of stuff going back to my Jewish roots. Now, am I wrong for the way I worship God? Okay, after all that you've learned today, I want you to answer that. It's yes or no. Are you wrong? After all, no, no, you said you don't feel. Don't go by what you feel. Okay, I'm not. Okay, you're not. Okay, go, let's go back to Romans 7. Verse. This is where you and I started off. But you mentioned holiness. Remember that. What is holiness? Okay. And I asked you, I ask you again, do you keep God's laws? Yes or no? You do. Okay. I'm just going to take a look at you. Hey, no offense. I'm looking at everybody. I'm looking at her. I'm looking at you. Today's the seventh. I'm looking at everybody. So I don't want you to feel isolated. Okay. Give me numbers 15. And us being born again and returning as a nation. One of the things that the Most High gave us as a people is a dress code. Because many of us have been brought up under America, American ideas. We've been. Where's, where's the criminal? Can I have the criminal? It's this one. Oh, it's on. Yes, there's the criminal. We've been brought up under this. What is God's dress code for our people? Come on. Here we are. Numbers 15, verse 37. Now I'm just going to start here. Can, bro, can you listen? I'm asking you. I just want to be here. I know. I know. But can you be just going to answer this question? Numbers 15. Come on. And, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto, speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue and it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord so and do them. God gave the Israelites a dress code. How many Native American Indians? Find out for Native American right here, right here. Indians. Okay. This is how we know the American Indians are the tribe of Gad. When a white man conquered them, they always, from them to the Mexicans in their garments, they wore fringes and a border of blue. That's how Andrew Jackson knew who to destroy, Ponce de Leon knew to, who to destroy, uh, Cortez. All the Spanish conquistadors knew that those so-called Indians were Israelites. God gave us a dress code. Read it again, Uriel. Thank you. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations. The words throughout their generations, does that mean only for back then? Throughout their generations means what? Generation. Every generation. So in our repenting, we must abide in these laws. So now, I asked you at the beginning, do you keep God's command? So we have strike one. Because I do not see fringes or border of blue. Right? Okay. The next thing, uh, who's the name of, what's the name of your minister? Uh, your minister, yes. 
If we did not worship this image, that's why men leave. That's why, because women are easily deceived by the lies. So now, my church doesn't believe in the white Jesus. Your church follows the same customs as the white Jesus. Right. I'm gonna give you an example. The dance ministry you got is that biblical? Yeah. Now give me the scripture where the men got together. And Matter of fact. A man dancing for the Lord. David dancing David, for the Lord. David dancing but listen, for the Lord. but that why did he dance? Was it some set of orchestrated thing, or he was dancing out of joy? He was dancing out of joy. Okay, now my question is, we'll go back to my question. Was there an orchestrated dance movement of men doing this? No. Okay. Not at all. Not at all. I'm gonna show you something. First Corinthians six and nine. Listen good. I'm gonna show you why a lot of young men. Why they get into the dance movement, why the, a lot of them, not trying to be offensive, why they speak very soft. Let's explain here. Come on. First Corinthians 6, verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? That's, he's going to break down the unrighteous. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor effeminate, nor abuses of themselves with mankind. Let's talk about the Christian church men now. In the Christian church, let's talk about their choirs. You have a lot of effeminate men and homosexuals. Is that right or wrong? Yes, they fill the churches. Read it again from verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? So the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. None of those things that we just read will inherit the kingdom, but they fill the churches. They fill the choirs. It's all out of order. It's all of Satan. Every, that's what I said earlier. Every church established, including yours, of the devil because they right. have not taught you you're the Israelites they've not taught you what tribe you come from they've made up a system of lies to bring young men and women in right you understand that your church is of the devil Ryan that's right I'm gonna say it again your church is of the devil and the fruits of it is what we're hearing from you and observing you you're, you're following 
that everything that this criminal, Cesar Borgia, has established throughout America, what's the your church non-denomination? That's the new thing. That's the new thing. And I knew he's gonna say that because the new movement is say you're non-denomination. But they follow the same thing. Do they worship on Sunday? Um, they don't get together on Sunday? That was not. Do they get together on Sunday? Can you, okay, do you observe the Sabbath day? When is the Sabbath? Saturday. What is it a sign between? There's, there's a purpose behind God's Sabbath. Give me Exodus 31. I'm going to show you what the Sabbath is all about. I'm going to show you how your church is still out of order. Exodus 31, verse 16. 16. I want her to read along with us. That way she understands that we're not lying. At all. We have... I go to a Saturday church. Wait a minute, let me go in. You got to hand it out. I go to the Saturday church. Yeah? Well, you stay out of that Seventh-day Adventist thing. No, no. I want 16 or 17. Exodus 31, verse 16. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath. Wait, wait, who's it talking about? The children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath uh -huh. to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations. Meaning always. For a perpetual covenant. For a perpetual covenant, meaning always. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. The Sabbath day is a sign between the children of Israel and God. Your churches don't even teach you the Israelites. Many of you don't know your race, your nationality. So your church is founded on lies. That's because right. Jesus Christ said Matthew 15, 24. Matthew 15, 24. Listen good. Matthew 15, 24. Come on. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, I'm going to show you what Christianity is. Christianity says, we don't believe that. We're going to create a new renaissance religion that everyone is included in. But we can't use Matthew 15, 24. You ever, when you get home, Google World Council of Churches. Just Google it. And you read about a yearly meeting of all of the major churches, how they sit down and discuss how to incorporate scripture in their doctrine. So they couldn't use Matthew 15, 24 to incorporate anybody. But it is the first they decided to use. John 3.16. They said we can use John 3.16. Can you get that for me? Oh, like the one that he quoted earlier. Right, like the one he quoted earlier. So this is what they do in John 3.16. This is good. Because remember, Jesus Christ does not contradict himself. Do we understand that? Yes. Where do the contradictions come from? The churches on the earth. That's right. We just read Matthew 15.24. Did it say Christ came for everybody? Did it say Christ came for everybody? Okay, now let's look at John 3, 16. John 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's a, seems like a contradiction. Matthew 15, 24, he said he's only sent to the Israelites. John 3, 16, it says the word world there. And because black people, we don't like to look at words. That's why they call us niggas. We don't like to read. Does anybody know the meaning of the word world? I want you to look it up on your phone. Let's look up the word world. Anybody got a dictionary? Regular dictionary. Somebody, one of you brought the dictionary. Find me a dictionary. I want you to still look it up, brother. But if he said, whosoever, whosoever believeth in him, should not carry Oh, we're going to, yes. We're going to get to all that. Alright. What you got? Okay, so this is Wikipedia, but that's only because I'm talking about. Okay. Okay. Well, there's a common word, name you, for the whole of humans. So all of humans? It's a specific experience. Okay. Go ahead. Um, 
In the theological context, the world usually refers to the material or the profane sphere as opposed to the celestial, spiritual, transcendent, or sacred. Come on, gotta be more. The end of the world refers to the scenarios of the final end of human history, often in religious context. Uh -huh. Um, this is Wikipedia. Let's Wikipedia. Give me a real dictionary. Let me... Let's read it. Let me... Let me read it. This is out of the uh, American yeah, Heritage... This is out of the American Heritage Dictionary. I'm going to read the word, the definitions of the word world. Read all of them. That's right. It says the earth. That's one definition. The universe. That's the second. The, the earth with its inhabitants. Uh, the human race. The public. A specified part of the earth, a realm or domain, a sphere of human activity and, or interest. So now, I want you to read, I want you to look at it, right? We've got a highlight. So you know we're not making it up. Can you read the highlighted one for us? Oh, no, no, no. It's not highlighted? What number is it? Yeah, that's one. Uh, where was it at? Right up here. This one I was reading earlier. Okay. Got it? Read it loud. Word. The earth, the universe, the earth is, oh, the earth with its inhabitants, the human race, the public, often a specific part of the earth, a realm or domain, a sphere of human activity or interest, the world of sports, a particular way of life, secular life and its concerns, a woman of the world, a, so you see how it's different a large amount did him in the world. You see there's different definitions for work. Right. Now here's another one. Look at number seven here. Read that one out loud too. Alright. A particular class of people with common interests, aims, etc. The fashionable world. Right. So that's another meaning. So now, let's examine. Let's, we got all these meanings. It could mean the planet, meaning everybody, or a particular class of people. Let's see which one John 3.16 is talking about. Right. Why don't we start up at verse 14? Oh, read that. Oh. Come on. John 3, verse 14. I want all y'all to pay attention. And as Moses lifted up himself in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So now, Brian, you know the history in the Bible. A little bit. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. You familiar with that history? Who did Moses lift up the serpent in the wilderness to? The huh? The no, 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 no. Hold on, give me that numbers. Wait, I'm sorry, the serpent? Numbers 21. Wait, numbers 21. Verse, verse 6. Nine. Okay, you can start at 6. Verse 6. Yes, yeah, start at 6. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Many of the Israelites died because of poisonous snakes. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned. For we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. Come on. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent. Uh, make on. thee a fiery serpent and set it up on a pole. And it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when, when he look up, up on the pole, shall live. So now God told Moses, Because all the Israelites are getting bit by these poisonous snakes, make you a serpent. Put it on a pole. You understand? And whoever looks at it of Israel shall live. That's the history you need to learn. You understand that, Brian? You understand that? You don't get it, do you? Read it again, verse 6 to 9. Don't stutter. I need you to flow. Verse 6 to 9, right? Yeah. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it up on a pole, and it shall come to pass, that every one that is beaten, when, when he look upon it, shall live. So now, let's go back to John 3.14. You got the history now, Brian, right? You understand the history. John 3.14. John 3, verse 14. And, Mo and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so, must the Son of Man be lifted up. So, Brian, let's examine that. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, who did he lift up the serpent in the wilderness to? The Israelites. It wasn't all nations running around with us. It was the Israelites. That's why we just read, much people of Israel 
die. Right. Read it again. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so. Moses. Even so. What does even so mean, sir? Mm. Means the same way. The same way. So must the Son of Man be lifted up. So now, we're getting some understanding as we read above it. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness to the children of Israel, the same way must the Son of Man be lifted up. To who? To the people of Israel. It's going to read as we go down, okay? That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. That who? Is that verse 15? Yes, sir. Go ahead. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So the whosoever, what does it make a reference to? Because I know, because she said, whosoever, right? Whosoever. Let's get Ananias. Get her Acts 2, 21. I want you to get Acts 2, 21 also. Get Acts 2, 21. I want everybody to pay attention. Let me know when y'all get it. Got, Got it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Acts 2, verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Who? Ye men of Israel, hear these words. So he's saying, whosoever, ye men of Israel, hear this. He's not saying, run to the Chinese, run to the Japanese. He says, you men of Israel, hear this. Whosoever amongst you that believes this shall be saved. He's not running to other races. Now let's go to an Old Testament. Joel chapter 2, verse 32. We're going to get to Old Testament and New Testament. We ain't leaving no stone unturned. Joel 2, verse 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion. For in Mount Zion. And in Jerusalem, and in Jerusalem, shall be deliverance. Do you hear what it said, Brian? It said that the World Council of Churches has manipulated the minds of blacks and Latinos worldwide. Come on. John 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world. So now, you still might say, Brian, I'm not sure about that word world. I think biblically, world can mean anybody. I'm going to give you some scriptural precepts to help you. Go to John 18 and 20 for the world world. John 18 and 20. John 18, verse 20. Here it go. Listen good. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. Christ said, I spake openly to the world. Let's see what world. I ever taught in the synagogue. All the world he's talking about is the world of the synagogues. And in the temple, where there the Jews always resort. So the world he's talking about is the world of the Jews. That's right. Remember the seventh meaning you read on the dictionary? It said a particular people having common interests, goals, and aims. Mm. Let's get another Old Testament one. Isaiah 45, 17. Mm. Mm -hmm. Good. Ready? Ready? Good. Mm -hmm. Good. Yep. Isaiah 45, verse 17. But Israel, wait, read it again. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. So the Israelites are the world without end. That's right. So every scripture, we could go to a lot more that shows the world for salvation is the Israelites. John 3, 16 again. John 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world. Now we understand. That the world God so loved is the world of Israel. Now I got another question for you. Is there a scripture? Is there a scripture where God says he loves the Philistines, the Jebusites, the Hamites, the Edomites, the Ishmaelites? Is there any scripture where God says he loves them? You a Bible scholar? I haven't seen it. Okay, you haven't seen it. Very good. Honest. I'm going to show you who God said he loves out of his own mouth. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Who does God so love? For God so loved. Deuteronomy 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. And that's heavy. Now watch the next verse. Mm. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people. For you are the fewest of all people. Here comes verse 8. But because the Lord loved you. But because the Lord loved you. 
desperate for God so love. Who did he so love? The Israelites. The Israelites. The, the Israelites. Israelites. You could you could hold your breath and stomp your feet and try to bring in other races all you want. This ride ain't for them. This ride is for you and your ancestors. You and your children, your sons, your daughters. Right. Yes. How the so-called Jews came in. Any Bible scholars out there? Think about the white man, right? Any Bible scholars out there that know how the so-called white man was able to set himself up as a Jew? As Jews? Ezekiel uh, 36. And they have all, all the wealth? Mm -hmm. Is that what I want? Because what? Because mm -hmm. of disobedience. There you go. Ezekiel 36 and 5, I think. Let me look at it. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's okay. It. Ezekiel 36 and 5. Are you clear, Brian? I'm, this is what, I know you got to leave, right? Yeah. What you need to do, Brian, is really look at that scripture, that, those flies. Consider all that you've learned today. All that you've learned today, when you get to your church tomorrow morning, look and listen. Don't go by how you feel. I don't care. God is not dealing with you. So, shit, uh, what's that word? I feel tingly. God ain't dealing with that. Right, right, right. right. First yeah. Samuel says he's a God of knowledge. And by him, actions are weighed. No matter what your friends say, your mother, your father, your sister, brother, girlfriend, you better do what that Bible says and repent as an Israelite. That's right. If you go any other way, you're walking a path of destruction. Brilliant. You understand what I'm saying to you? All right, brother. I hope you do. Now, back to you, your question. Um, Ezekiel 36 and 5. Ezekiel 36, verse 5. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all I do near, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart. So, I do near is a Greek word for Edom. That's the race that took over our land, sister. You got that? Oh, there's your friend Daryl. You understand that, sister? It might be kind of hard for you. Write that down, Ezekiel 36. Read it again for me. Ezekiel 36, verse 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumea, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart. Now, what I want to do is go to the book of Esther. I need you to help me with this. Esther, when a, many people converted, that one. Esther chapter 8 verse 17 shows when the beginning of the conversion of the nations to being Jews. Read that. Esther 8 verse 17. And in every province and in every city, with us aware of the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness and feast and good days. So our people had joy and gladness as we overcame the other nations. Read. And many of the people of the land became Jews. And many people of the land became Jews, meaning converted to being Jews. That's one of the beginning of when the whites and many of these other nations started to say that they were Jews too. Now go to Luke 1 and 5. Luke 1 verse 5. Yeah. Luke 1 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Luke 1 verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias. Now the one we want to concentrate on is Herod. When you look up Herod, he was an Idumean, an Edomite, a white man. Who, set, who was set up as king of Judea. How could a white man be set up as king of the Jews? He had converted from way back. When we read about in Esther, that was one of the beginning times when many nations converted. He set himself up as a Jew and destroyed us. That's the group that you see in over in Eastern Parkway, Israel today. That's the family. Now give me the one in Acts about uh, Agrippa. I know you understand. 26. 26. That's yes. Acts 26, Give me that. Verse Acts 26 six. and verse. Three, I don't know the verse. Three. First, start at verse 2. Acts 26. Acts verse 26, verse, verse, verse 2. Let's start at verse 1. I want to start at verse 1. Verse 1. Then, then, then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered it for himself. Subject matter is Agrippa. Who was Agrippa? Read. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee 
to be an expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. How was Agrippa an expert in all things pertaining to the Jews? He was a convert. Agrippa was of the same family as Herod, mm. the Idumean leader. Mm. You understand that? That was the same family line. They were converts. And they were used by Rome to destroy us in 70 AD. That's why many of millions of us fled into Africa, fleeing Roman persecution. It tells you that in Luke 21. So, what, is that it? You closing up? Yeah. So now we're going to close out. Building the nation of Israel. They're going to come in sick. 